hope your day is full of rainbow sherbet and gelato and banana splits and chocolate sundaes and key lime pies and chocolate eclairs and cannolis and cheesecake and chocolate dipped cheesecake and churros and tiramisu and panna cotta and creme brulee. Guys, what dessert didn't I fucking name? Oh, I know. Peach cobbler. In all of the things, I hope you have a sugar-fueled Wednesday. Guys, hi. Welcome to another episode of Shank. It is I, Sarah Weinshank, uh, reporting live from bed. I am in bed right now because it's just one of those days. Some days, you know... I record my podcast intro from bed. I uh, have to say adjusting to the real world has been a wild ride. That being said, stand updates. Guys, come see me live. Tonight, I'm at Supernova Comedy in Hollywood, 7 p.m. Great lineup. Tiffany Haddish is on the lineup. Anthony Jeselnik. Those are just a few names to name some names. Jeff Ross is on the lineup. It's going to be a fun time. 7 p.m. Hollywood Supernova tonight. Also, June 19th, coming to San Diego. That's right, my San Diego lovers, my San Diego friends. Wolfie, Rachel Wolfson and I, who's the guest on this week's podcast, are coming to San Diego. We will be inside of you June 19th. Come watch me headline and watch Rachel open. It's going to be so much fun. It's going to be an awesome night of comedy. I can't wait for you guys to come out and check that out. Uh, Yeah, this week's episode of Shank is presented to you by Flint's Mints. Mints that make your mouth water. If you have cotton mouth, dry mouth, I can't recommend these enough. Head to the website link in the description of this episode. Flint's.com. That's Flint with two T's. Flint's.com. Enter discount code Shank, S-H-E-N-K, for 15% off. They're great for cotton mouth. They're great for just anything you might need a little extra saliva in your mouth for. Flint's Mints is here for you. Dry mouth, cotton mouth, all of the things. Guys, enjoy this week's episode of Shank with Rachel Wolfson presented to you by Sunday Scaries, CBD, and Flint's Mints. I hope you guys enjoy it. Here it is. Wolfie's lighting the blunt. That's how we're starting this episode of Shank. That's how I roll. With a full blunt. Uh, thank you, Embra, for the weed. Love to see it. Uh, and then I want you to experience something you may have never experienced before, which is a mouth-watering mint. Me? Yeah. You're saying I need a mint? No, I'm saying I have the perfect solution for your cotton mouth. Is it medicated? No, but it's oh, going nice. to make you drool. Oh, okay. I like that. I'm into it. I'm into drooling. You are. Yeah, why not? Who isn't, you know? Especially in 2021. It's the age of the drool. No, these mints are really popular on TikTok. They're called Flint's Mints. There's all these like kids making sexual drooling videos. It's like a loophole. It's really cool that they include kids. Kids? I mean, that they're being inclusive. That they're being inclusive on TikTok? (laughs) Well, I mean, it's more like it's a loophole because you're not allowed to have sexual videos on TikTok. So there's like these, you know, TikTokers that are like, we just want to drool. And so I have the mints from TikTok here with us today. This is why I'll never have children. And they're also um, for cotton mouth. Instead of mints, we should just give them birth control. Birth control? Flavored well, mints. Birth control and mints. Fla- mint flavored birth control. Mint flavored birth control. What if we started making flavored birth control? I'd probably take it. <laughs> I'd probably take it as I should. You'd snort it? <laughs> flavored birth control? I'll b- I'll put it anywhere. As long as it prevents birth. I mean, what's your, what are your thoughts on birth? Never, never had it. Do you want it? If Would it's you meant to birth? be. Not right now. Would you be a surrogate? A surrogate? No, but I did see Sandy Danto perform the other day and he was talking about how him and his wife had a geriatric pregnancy, which is when you which is when you have kids after age 35. Yeah, so we would be having geriatric pregnancies. No, I still have a I still have, we a, still have I, a year. I still have some time. We still have some time. I'm like, what about your grandpa's sperm? I no mean, one ever talks about the fucking geriatric sperm swimming around there's so many geriatric men who just keep recreating it's like part of a rite of passage if you're like a famous guy you can have a baby at 82 and people will think nothing of it that's fucked yeah it's truly unfair i mean i just also think that it's crazy that 
at a certain point when you're on a dating app, it's hard for you as a woman to get matches because like when you're in your forties, people, it's 50 year olds want 30 year olds. Um, I've never been on a dating app probably cause I'm too mentally ill. Um, you've never been on a dating app. No, I've just always been in relationships. You've never been on Tinder. Hence the mental illness. Um, <laughs> you've never, yeah. Being in one I relationship. Even, I wouldn't even next. know how to like work a dating app. I did apply for Raya using your promo code and I never got accepted. And then, no. um, and then like, I never cared or like, I, I like, I met someone by the time, like. She's out here meeting got, people. In I got real life. whitelisted. I was like, well, the only time I signed up was using your promo co- promo code because you told me to. And I was like, well, I, I just want to do this for like pure research. Like, I don't actually want to be on a dating app. And if I'm gonna be on the dating app, I'm I want to be on for research. I want to be on actual dick. I want to be on the D list <laughs> celebrity dating app. <laughs> okay, Raya. <clears throat> Everyone on this dating app has a fedora and kids has a fedora kids and, and a cocaine problem oh, and has spent some time in their life djing so all of the above right it's like sounds la like, stereotypes like, times 50 it's sounds like, like the perfect man yeah it's crazy and also on raya it's like you'll match with people and then they won't it's just like they won't message you or they'll message you but you never actually hang out which is so annoying because it's like I also had someone recently who told me that they wanted to take me on a date, canceled on me twice, and then sent me a care package. And never hung out with me. <laughs> he sent you a care package? A dope care package, but I've never heard from him since. That's the weirdest re- rejection, he, but like also <laughs> dopest. It's like, here, I don't want to date you, but, but like, please receive this gift here, on have my behalf. Here, have some facial products um, <laughs> and he, some weed. That's what they gave you? Yeah. Wow. Um, and I was like on board to hang out with this guy. And then he just l- sent all these gifts and canceled on me twice. He canceled me twice. And then instead of rescheduling, he just sent a gift. I think that was his way of being like, I don't really actually want to hang out with you. Here, have here, these gifts. Here, t- you're going to need a joint for this. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, you know, getting rejected by Raya was, uh, was a compliment. And... Yeah, that's the only the closest I came to a dating app. You've um, never been on Bumble to cybering. No cybering. Bumble is overwhelming. I don't like it because you have to message the guy. And I'm not like someone who's going to message a dude. You guys could just do that on Instagram. Yeah, but Instagram is also I don't like when people message me on Instagram if I don't know them. Mm. Do you like getting that? Do you love your reply, guys? Um. Well, I mean, not all messages on Instagram are bad. Like for bookings and stuff, it's usually from people I don't know. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's true. DMs are open. But then you have to sort through a bunch of stuff. I love Instagram messages. I'm not going to lie. You do? Yeah, I don't mind them. You love DMs. Mm -hmm. If you want to slide into anyone's DMs, slide into Wolfie Comedies. I I respond a lot to my fans uh, or people, like anyone who really, if it's like, you know... I interact with them. I've been talking to the same people for years. I don't even know who they are. Well, sometimes it's crazy when you know somebody's handle, but then you meet them in real life and you're like, wow, doesn't add up, but still very exciting. Some people I prefer uh, in real life than online. (laughs) Some people I prefer online than in real life. I'm sure people feel that way about me. Like, I feel like I'm muted by so many people and then they just like. So why do you think people would mute you? Uh, The tweets are too fire. The tweets too fire. It's it's a threat. You're on mute. Muted. No, I post a lot that, of weed pictures. That, that bitches could be, mute you. They could because I think I post a lot of weed pictures too. That could be triggering, and some people don't do want to see that want, on the why algorithm. Why would people be triggered by you smoking weed? Well, I think well, some people don't want to see that. Like some people are professionals. Some people might be sober. Some people might you know professionals. They don't smoke weed, or I'm talking like non comedian. I'm talking people who like you know not civilians. Um, right. Like it's kind of like. I, ha- I follow my friends on uh, Twitter who are porn stars and like mm-hmm. I'll be drinking my morning coffee and there's like my friend getting rammed anally at 730 in the morning. And it's like, OK, that 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 would have been like an eight o'clock. But getting L- let me get my rammed? let me get my like morning coffee in before I go to anal is all I'm saying. Totally. But getting ass rams a lot different than smoking weed on on the feeds. Well, well, my thing is, is like to some people like that could be triggering. Also, if you follow me, 
um, you're gonna see a lot of weed on your time, like inadvertently, I think because of the algorithm, like if you go to the explore page, you know, if you follow one nail person, the whole feed will be just like nails, nails, <laughs> nail salons and nail art. It's like, I liked one picture. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> totally. I don't even, I'm not that much into nail art. Um, but yeah, well, like nail art is pretty fun to look at on Instagram. <laughs> yeah. But what I'm saying is like, weed is one of those niche, like communities on the internet where if you like, like one thing it like tricks the algorithm to like I don't know eat everything yeah I don't know or some people just don't don't no. like don't no. like the don't like Wolfie I don't know why yeah. did I refer, refer to myself third as third person Wolfie? yeah sorry I don't know I just meant Wolfie stoned. is the persona on in, on social media yeah but I feel like Wolfie is also who you are yeah right it's an extension of me at first I was like this girl well, wants me to call her Wolfie but her real name is Rachel growing, when we first met <laughs> I was like yeah I was like this is very confusing no, no, no. okay and well, then after a while I was like no she's just a Wolfie well that was a nickname that I received in college that just stuck stuck yeah yeah but nicknames thrive especially if they're kind of genderless like Shank and Wolf yeah like you know I, what I mean <laughs> also because it's like my last name you know what I mean? Like there was like seven Rachels, you know, it just like Rachel. There's a bunch of Sarah's, but there's right. only one shank. Exactly. Like, yeah, I you get know, it. there's and like I just like because it, it is it comes from my last name. You know what I mean? So it's yeah. not like it's an extension of you. Yeah. It's your alter it's nick- ego. It's a nickname. Yeah. Um, nicknames are important. I always when I'm going through the process of naming my future kids I'm like what could I abbreviate to and is the abbreviation as good as the full thing because you have to assume people are just going to abbreviate um nicknames are endearing like for example you know I I used to when I first started smoking name my bong my bongs of course you have to name my pieces and then like once you break them after a while you kind of stop naming them because you don't want to form an attachment to them you're like oh should I drop Holden Holden was my favorite I had Mrs. Bubbler. Mint. Mrs. Mint. She was a pink piece. She was my first piece that I got here in California. And then um, I had Tetris, my bong. That broke. Tetris, <laughs> your bong. And we couldn't put it back together. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then uh, I forget the other ones. Batman. Because uh, it looked like Batman. These are dumb names. Batman. But- She's such a stoner, bro. I know. This is my bong, Batman. Yeah. <laughs> um, what about hacky sack? Did you ever get into that? I mean, in, in like high school, middle school, high school. Yeah. No, middle school. That oh. was a middle school thing or were, a summer camp thing. It was like a stoner thing for us. It was like yeah. all the stoners at the all boys school would uh, have slip on vans so that they could mm-hmm. balance the hacky sack on their foot. It was hacky sack, skateboarding, um, <sighs> Pretty much, but mainly skateboarding. But do you remember fingerboarding where people I have would, one. You do? I still have one. <laughs> you do? do you Gomez do? plays with it. No, your cat. Oh, you mean a tech deck? A tech deck. Yeah, I have one. When I was a kid in middle school, my crush used to do fingerboarding up are- and down his binder, his five-star binder. Yeah. I was like, I want to fuck. Trapper keeper, you mean? Yes, yeah. same thing. Yeah. He was... You know, doing ollies with his hands. Mm-hmm. Exciting. What those fingers do. What those mm-hmm. fingers do. And then he would he would do tech deck on his binder. And then he would also pretend that his binder was a piano and he would play Benny and the Jets. And I was like, I am so into this guy. He's so multi <laughs> Seventh grade me was like, <laughs> <laughs> Seventh grade me was boy crazy, but not willing to do anything sexual. And that's the way it should be in seventh grade, to be honest. Some um, of these seventh graders advance. Were you so no comment? Um, what else is going on in your life? How are you excited to have, be back to comedy? I am excited to be back to comedy. Um, it's uh, it feels like we kind of never left. Does that make sense now? Because I started going back to the mics in February. Like, as soon as I got the vax, I'm just like, I'm back, baby. I'm back, baby. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's exciting being back. It makes you feel like you have a per Me feel like I have a purpose again, at least. Um. Yeah, I I'm I really missed it. And I just like it was something that was a part of my life, like a huge part of my life that I did every single day. And I just want to continue getting better as a stand up. Um, and growing. So I am glad to be able to be doing that again. That sucked. So, okay. What are the, the 
pluses of growing up in Vegas and the minuses of growing up in Vegas? Um, the pluses of growing up in Vegas. You got a firsthand look at the effects <laughs> of alcohol. <laughs> um, let's see. Uh, Let's talk about the minuses, mental illness, addiction, and uh, <laughs> debt. No, um, I don't know. The pluses, it's a sm it's like a big city with a small town feel, I guess. Okay. Um, so would you raise a family in Vegas? It's not a bad place. It's just, I don't know if it's the best place. Um I mean, it's still Las Vegas, but there is a lot to do. Now it's a sports town, which is really cool. Oh, yeah. Honestly, you just got a stadium, right? it doesn't matter where you live. It's all about the people who raise you, I think. And the I think people that's a good point. who you're raised around, if that makes sense. Like, it's all about who you who you surround yourself with. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Because people grow up in all kinds of environments and turn out all different kinds of ways. And so true. I just think that Vegas has its um, has its appeal. And then there are a lot of people who are like, bless you. Bless you. Who, Thank you. Double sneeze. Yeah. There are wow. a lot of people who can only go there for two days or just like never want to visit there ever. And I completely understand that as well. Um, I think it's a fun town. It's only getting better. Um, it's got great food, entertainment. There's a small vintage. There's the, great vintage there's a comedy scene that's growing there that's really cool to see um you know vega the sports like i said we're getting like professional sports teams my mom's such a hockey mom now your mom's into hockey i don't She's even know who she is hockey and golden doodles mostly yeah so like i mean it's pretty dope also it's cheap to live there or you know it's still relatively cheaper than la la and new york and it's a desert town, great weather. So I think you should let this, everyone this uh, this podcast has been sponsored to sponsored by Move to Las Vegas. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think it's important to address the fact that your mom was a television judge. My mom was like a TV judge, just like Judge Judy. She was Judge Jackie, and that was exciting, right? Mm -hmm. To have a TV judge mom. Um, yeah, I'm, sh I'm sure it was exciting for her. <laughs> <laughs> I, oh, I think that that's like the most fun fact about you. That your mom was a TV judge. I think it, it is a fun fact. It's like a fun fact. Nobody, not many people can say that their mom was a TV judge. Um, yeah, it's a fun fact. It's not the most fun, but it's, it's the, it's, it's still top a fact. five. Um, top five fun facts. Like if it's like when they do five fast facts about Rachel Wolfson, yeah. her mother was the judge that put OJ Simpson in prison. That's that's a hot, that's a hot fact. Yeah, that's got to be number one. Probably. Well, she put him in prison for him stealing his merch, right? From wasn't he? Didn't he steal his stuff in Vegas? It was something like that. Yeah. He gets away with a murder, but then Jackie gets him for that. Uh. <laughs> I can understand, like, you know, merch is expensive. Especially if it's your own. Don't you? You're oh, like, I feel, like, I feel entitled yeah, yeah, yeah. to it because it once was mine. I mean. Insane. Yeah. Um, But yeah, no. See, I think you're right. I think it just depends on the environment and what you grew up in. I also, what do you think about people who bring their children to music festivals? Have you ever seen that? It's like um, it, toddlers and infants with like huge headphones on. As someone who's never had a child, but I can only imagine um, the situation where they have these Coachella tickets and they've had them for a long time. And last minute, the babysitter cancels. Your grandma's not in town. Um, and uh, they look at each other or she just like looks at her baby and she's like, we're going to Coachella. And then throws the headphones on the baby. Um, Seeing an infant in those huge like noise canceling headphones at a festival is a jarring sight. I did attend a party the other day where there was a baby or two there and um I felt it was necessary to go in the corner to smoke a joint 
<laughs> well, you definitely can't smoke in the direction of a baby. Unless you're just rude. You can't. Well, that's the thing. I didn't box want, a room with I didn't a baby want in to it. be rude. Um So yeah, I just, you know, I left I left I left the baby area. I respect that. I feel like there should be a baby area at parties. Like, I feel like babies them- just shouldn't be at parties. It's too if there much. There are drugs around. No, I babies. just don't want to be responsible for your baby. No offense. I think that if there is a baby, if it's a baby friendly party, there should be a baby friendly section away from the drug area. That's just my personal opinion. I'm not saying that parents can't party or shouldn't party. They absolutely should more than anyone. And if you want to bring your baby, just keep them away from my blunt smoke. Please. Just, I also just think like, Six why feet. do not bring your baby to Burning Man? Yeah. There's parents that bring their babies to Burning Man and they have like different types of camps. And they like teach their kids about the barter system. I know because I used to babysit for this woman who kept trying to be like, should I bring my kids to Burning Man? And I kept being like, no, your kids are already fucking out of control. They'll be on acid if you bring them to Burning Man. 12 year old wild boys, three of them at Burning Man with like men in like weird costumes. Yeah. I mean, I just it sounds like it just sounds like. You know, when you're parents, you still you you, you still want to party. Parents you know? who party. Parents who party. It is really crazy seeing people party that you don't normally see party. Like I went to a party this weekend and I saw a lady who works at my favorite restaurant that was there. Oh. And I was like, this is like seeing a teacher outside In of the school. Wild. <laughs> yeah. I was like, oh my God, she gets down on the weekends. Oh no, it is wild. It's also like weird to see comedians like not on stage, like out somewhere in public, like eating. Like that's what it's like. I remember. You know okay, I, mean? I remember no, before Delia was canceled, I saw him. Um, <laughs> I ordered a sandwich from the sandwich place, and when I went to go pick it up, he had ordered the same sandwich, and he took my sandwich. He bumped me at the sandwich place, and I was so pissed. I was like, "Can I get a break from Delia bumping me everywhere I fucking go? I can't oh. even just get a sandwich without him all of a sudden bumping me." Hopefully, you guys only share taste in sandwiches. It's true. Um. No, yeah, it is weird seeing a comic, especially if it's only a comic you don't know well, out in the wild. You're like, I know you kind of, but like, yeah. and seeing them out of context is like, whoa. Yeah, like, what are you doing? What are we doing? Shouldn't we be on stage? <laughs> I was at a party in the, deep in the canyon, and I met someone who was who knew Josh Martin. It was random. Wow. I was like, what? This is crazy. Um, yeah. What do you think? Are you a doomsday prepper at all? Um, what are your thoughts on doomsday prep? I don't even prep for today. <laughs> Let alone the end of the world. But I do think I have a lot of en- good end of the world outfits. Really? Sweatpants. A lot of crop tops. Yeah, sweatpants and crop tops. You don't need a full shirt when the world's ending. No, you just let it all hang out, baby. I'm right? not even wearing a shirt right now. <laughs> like You're fuck. like, you want a podcast, Wolfie? I'm like, yeah, but I'm not going to wear a shirt. That's part, one of the benefits of podcasting from home. You don't even need to put a shirt on. Mm-mm. Nobody needs a full shirt. Nope. Um, what do you feel? Okay. I remember when I was in middle school, there was this lady who used to pick up her kids. And do you remember like the hot moms when you were a kid? Yeah. Didn't they like stick out in your head? <coughs> yeah. They were mentally ill. <laughs> yeah. They were always mentally ill. Or drunk. Or drunk. Or like they look too good for I the understand. school pickup. They had to be married to their fathers. Yeah. <laughs> like I get it. And they, those are their sons. Yeah, no, it was, I remember there's this one hot mom. She would always show up in like a neon outfit with like a bright neon scrunchie to pick up her kids. And it was so extra that forever she was like, her face and her outfits are just like ingrained in my head. Because I was like, damn, I didn't know moms could wear neon green, yeah. s- like sports bras and like cool biker shorts with like crazy Meanwhile, side She's ponytail. probably in her like mid 20s. Yeah, she probably <laughs> was because people were having kids so young, man. Yeah. And and in my mind, I'm like, this is not how moms dress. I was like, and then I, I was kind of like, mom, why don't you wear crop tops? Like, <laughs> like this person's mom or this one lady's, this one girl had the hottest mom. But then we found out later that her mom locked her in the closet. So you're right. Mental illness, mental illness, hot moms equal mental illness. Mm-hmm. Are you anxious? Are you tired? 
but you can't sleep, try CBD and not just any CBD, Sunday Scaries CBD. Guys, Sunday Scaries is an amazing CBD company. They have so many different options to choose from. I personally love the vegan gummies. I'm not even vegan and these are my favorite. They're sour gumdrops. They're made for chilling. They have CBD in them, plus B12 and D3, which are great for your immune system and your energy levels. Also, if you're not into a sour gummy, they have these classic gummy bears. These also are infused with D3 and B12, great for your energy levels, immune system, and full of CBD. So a great way to chill out after a long, long day. They also make unicorn jerky, which are sour belts dosed with CBD. They're rainbow belts. They're so, so good. And they have CBD on them. Uh, discount code SHANK, S-H-E-N-K, for 25% off. Sunday Scaries also makes a tincture. Uh, what I love most about this tincture is the flavor. It tastes just like candy. So if you're someone who's tried a bunch of CBD products and you're not into the flavor, I can't recommend the flavor enough. It's so tasty, uh, tastes just like candy. And the tincture also has B12 and D3, great for your energy levels and your immune system. Head to sundayscaries.com, discount code SHANK, S-H-E-N-K, for 25% off. I don't know any other podcast giving 25% off CBD. So if you're looking for a way to ease back into life post-pandemic, Sunday Scaries is the answer for you. Discount code SHANK, S-H-E-N-K, 25% off. Link in the description of this episode, head to sundayscaries.com. Guys, do you have dry mouth? I do. I always have cotton mouth, dry mouth, and it's a bummer. That's why I love Flint's Mints. Flint's are a sponsor of this podcast. You can follow them at flint's.com. Uh, these are special. They make your mouth water. If you're someone who has dry mouth, cotton mouth, or just wishes they had more saliva in their mouth, I can't recommend these enough. They're for people who are orally fixated. If you're someone who loves a mint, if you're someone who smokes a bunch of weed and has cotton mouth, check out Flint's Mints. Discount code SHANK, S-H-E-N-K, for 15% off. And Flint's Mints has amazing flavors. And they come in these really cute collectible tins. Like, look at this one. This one's a watermelon, cool watermelon. This level is strength 100. So depending on the strength, that's how much it makes your mouth water. So this will be a tame experience compared to the cinnamon ginger, which is my favorite. This will make your mouth really water. Uh, and the flavor is cinnamon ginger flints.com discount code shank for 15% off. I actually reach out to them to see if they were interested in sponsoring my podcast because I knew that I would love these and I fucking love them. They make your mouth sparkle. They make your mouth twinkle. They make your mouth clean. It's like sending your mouth to the spa. If you're not into a fruity flavored mint, they also have a classic mint. This one I loved. It's empty because I ate it all. Um, they have sour tangerine, lemon, cherry, strawberry magic. Look at how cute the artwork is. They collaborate with different artists for really cute tin designs. Guys, head to flints.com. Discount code SHANK for 15% off. I can't recommend these enough to all my stoners, my lovers, my friends. Guys, let's get back to this week's episode of SHANK with Rachel Wolfson. So... We love me we love mental illness. We talk about it comfortably. Yeah. We're in therapy, both of us collectively. Ugh. Yep. Do you find therapy to be useful? Yeah. When I go. When you go. <laughs> Are you doing it online or in person? Uh we've been online for the last year and I hate online therapy, but I still do it. You know what I find? About fifteen minutes into the therapy session, I go, and that's it. And the therapist goes, okay, and so what else? And I go, yeah. that's it. And he goes, no, we still have 30 more minutes left of the session. And I'm like, let's not talk about okay, childhood shake, trauma. That just means your life is going well currently. I haven't ran out of things to say yet. Usually I'm like, wow, that session was quick. Well, like, can I tell you, when things go... Okay, there's nothing better than having something really shitty happening, happening, and then already having therapy on the oh yeah, oh my calendar. God, it's the best. You're like, thank God. Yeah. And there's nothing worse than suddenly having you a really bad therapy, day, and then something bad happens. You just had therapy, and then something bad happens. And you're like, you have okay. to wait a whole week. It's like to, to like, process. Ugh. Yeah. 
But I have found a lot of benefits from therapy and it's not, and it's subtle at first. But then mm. when I think about overall, like my life has become exponentially better from therapy. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> big advocate of therapy. I think anyone who's in stand up comedy should be in therapy. Yeah, for sure. But the problem is the expense of therapy. Yeah, but there's a lot of sliding, sliding scale scales. options here in California because they know everyone's mentally ill. So they have people well, like, oh, actresses, comedians. <laughs> yeah, like in the year of models. our Lord 2021, you're still coming here. Um, no. Um, so, yeah, there's a lot of options where um, depending on your budget, you can see someone based off what you're making or not making, you know. Totally. And, um, and I think we're only going to continue to see that more. You know what's interesting? Just some weeks when after I see my therapist, I'm like, I can't believe he said that. I don't like him right now. And then like a week will go by and I'm like, I think he was right. <laughs> I guess I have to see him again. Um, Does that ever happen? Like where like you don't like what they're telling you because it's like a too real and you don't you're not ready to deal with that right yeah, then. Yeah, all the time. And you're like, I'm fucking annoyed. Like a bratty like teenager. Yeah. I get like that a yeah. lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like, don't tell me that I that I'm making bad decisions with men. Yeah, like I paid to like, put okay, me in a good right. mood. Yeah, put me in a good, build me up. Yeah. <laughs> you know, tell me I'm a star. She's not going to sugarcoat us. Yeah, no. Uh, one of the things I miss most about going to in-person therapy is that my therapist has bomb candy, like fruit punch Jolly oh, Ranchers. Wow. Yeah, my therapist Rare. doesn't have that. She just has tissues and not even the soft kind. No. Yeah, but that's probably not her choice. Mm -hmm. Well, it's also not not her choice. Yeah. Get some puffs, baby girl. Yeah. You have no, I think they might be soft. Yeah, here. Take this. Finish this. Thank you. This is a serious joint. Um, what are your thoughts on, like, how are you feeling about bathing suit season? I'm ready, baby. You're ready. Yeah. You've been on your Peloton. Mm hmm Do you love it? I've been spinning on and off the bike. <laughs> 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 on and off the bike that's amazing um, do i what do you actually like it? do you like spin um to be honest i fell in love with it and i was inspired by you because you were doing spin a lot before the pandemic and i was like damn shank looks amazing and yeah, i was doing so much spin she's like so dedicated to it and i was like i've never really been like i i had a bike growing up but like i i was i didn't like well, it's like an old school played, stationary bike or an outdoor no, no, no. bike. I had an outdoor bike. Like oh, I knew yeah. how to ride a bike. Like I wasn't like like I liked riding bikes as a kid, but then I grew up and started playing basketball. So I had like, you know, it wasn't like um I was like heavily into biking. And as work like working out, I just I really like um you know, I was doing like hit training and that kind of stuff. So I never really did spin and I never really got the hype on spin. I was like, why is everyone so obsessed with this? You guys are in a cult. It's a drug. Like, why? Why are you having Peloton themed birthdays? I don't under. I Peloton was like, themed birthdays? Yeah, no, I know people who do that. And like, I finally get it. <laughs> it puts you in an incredible mood. I well, think it is like a cult because like certain certain elements of a cult are like similar to like, OK, you know, putting like getting you in that like they a Euphoric lot of like state. they have these events where you're just like yeah high energy doing something together like there's someone leading it you know they're like tapping into you know your, you feel it, but like you're dude, really a part of my something. Pa the, my favorite peloton instructor jess king she's my best friend she just doesn't know it yet like she has no idea how much she means to me <laughs> like no, i'll be on the bike and matt will just like walk in the room and she'll just be saying affirmations to like me and the class and i'm just like yes, yes jess queen. yes like i'm crying yeah no no <laughs> i cry i used to cry during spin too like it does does something to you yeah. it fucking changes you it makes you a better person now i'm like i need a peloton so after three months because i you know at first like you don't see when you're working out you don't see the results right and then away you're like i want to give up you're, because and, i thought it was yeah, gonna yeah, be yeah. a different i thought it was gonna look like kate moss after one class well, <laughs> so, no, no, like, so i've never oh, really sweat happen. as much as i have aside from like hit training um and even then, I feel like in those so, training, I feel like you start to plateau. Well, so, hit is high intensity interval training. Yeah. For those so who I don't know. So with um, so with the Peloton, I've just been really consistent. I'm on my like 16th week consecutive week. Mm -hmm. And like, I don't 
I, I do at least three to five classes a week, but I try not if sometimes do it every, like some weeks I'll go eight days, you know, I'll go every single day and I'll do either 30 minutes, 45. But if I'm busy, I still try to get in like a 20 minute. Okay. So no matter what, I've just like tried to up the consistency. Mm-hmm. And then also with like my diet, you know, being doing comedy we have not all of us have the best eating habits as comedians like even the club options for food are not always healthy and if you're traveling on the and road the alcohol, good fucking luck and the alcohol and like even yeah working out on the road and remaining consistent is very hard so you're like i'm gonna eat healthy there's a carl's jr yeah so i'm just like after mics and shows and stuff matt and i and friends will like hold on Hold, please hold while she lights her I don't joint. Light myself on fire. That would be tragic. I don't want this to be the episode where you light yourself on fire. Although it might get a lot of views. Viral. <laughs> um, no, like, well, you know, I have the tendency sometimes to like, I'm like, let's go out and drink and eat. But um, I, I'm trying to save money and <coughs> also eat healthier. And that's when I started to notice the differences about three months. What is 16 weeks in? Four, eight, 12. Six, four, four months, months in and yeah I've started to see like changes yeah well for me I have to work out first and foremost for my mental health yeah because that's where I see the biggest difference and if I don't work out I mean it is like night and day mentally for me Same. if I don't work out my <laughs> mental health suffers like exponentially <laughs> and Sorry to your listeners once for you're coughing in the in habit there. of of doing it, you really notice when your body hasn't worked out. Like right. you physically feel different. And for like, if I take off a few days in a row, I'll, I just feel gross. Yeah, like I I think today <coughs> it was the holiday weekend, so I think I didn't work out for like two or three days. And today I woke up and I was like, if I don't get on that bike, I'm going to even self loathe more so um i just woke up i got 20 minutes out of the way i got a good sweat in and it made a world of difference i guess yeah i mean even if it's just moving your body for 30 minutes in some Mm -hmm. way is so much better than not and i am so sore because over the weekend i was hula hooping nonstop at a party (laughs) i'm not like someone who can dance publicly (laughs) do you dance publicly no no, she's from Vegas, but don't catch her dancing at the clubs. If I could dance publicly, I would be a stripper. You wouldn't be a comic. I'd be making so much money. Can strippers even dance, or are they just? I mean, like, free? Not, or I would just, I would just put the, t- I would take my talents to make different stages. <laughs> yeah, totally. Like Cirque. Um, Do you like Cirque so like? Yeah. Did you especially on on drugs? Yeah. Yeah. Which one do you like the most? Beatles love baby. That's what I think too. I've yeah. seen it like three or four times. I've like seen it a million times. Do you see how excited I just got when we when I realized we you should love- take mushrooms and do that? That would be an experience. Yeah. Just like how they do um in Knocked Up. Oh my god, I haven't seen Knocked Up in so long. Mm-hmm. Wow, Catherine Heigl. Mm-hmm. Wow. Seth Rogen. Didn't Catherine Heigl like get canceled for some reason? People are like, know. she's, I clicked some clickbait. It was like Catherine Heigl, difficult to work with. It was like two in the morning. I'm <laughs> high. I'm deep in like the cat, Catherine Heigl uh, clickbait. Yeah. That's how I pass the time. Mm-hmm. I love your chains. They're, they're my Two dad's. chains. Yeah. Your dad gives you chains. I get comments on them. I'm like, I just want everyone to know that these are my father's. Your and father? Yeah. Your fa- your Jewish father rocks chains. Yeah. And we love that about him. My mm-hmm. dad also has one single gold necklace. What is that? Some Jewish shit? It's called Fashion Sweetie. <sighs> you f- look it up. Yeah. Any fashion tips for men? Um, listening to this podcast. <sighs> I like people, well, I guess I prefer, I like when men wear clothes that fit them. Fit them. Right. Well, what do, you, what do you think it is about these men wearing clothes that don't properly fit? Do you think they just don't know? Do you think they just don't care? Do you think? Probably all of the above. Do you think they don't have someone in their life to be like, hey. Honey. And like some guys don't like being told, hey, that looks bad. I sometimes think that it takes a partner for them to change that. To rise to the occasion. To if be they're like, willing. They're like, I'm getting pussy, so I will wear different pants. <laughs> but I also, I don't know. I mean, just like be confident with what you wear and wear clothes that fit you. 
I mean, hopefully as me wearing a top that's too small. <laughs> Just be confident. I mean, confidence is 99% of everything. Um, and sometimes it's hard to be confident in this day and age. Yeah. Do you like how I said day and age? Mm-hmm. Like, am I 55? Like, I love sweatpants. <laughs> I don't know. Like, I, I honestly, like, I don't really like, I don't like telling other people necessarily what to wear mm-hmm. because. Well, people hit me up all the time. I and just they love know. sweatpants. Like, I don't want to be. Um, yeah, I get that. Like, I don't know. I, I just, just think it, make sure it's clean. Yeah. Nothing worse than dirty clothes. True. That is one thing for Ben. It's like if you've worn this shirt or pants several days in a row, it's time to wash them. Well, if it smells like wash it. Yeah. What do you think about water parks canceled after COVID? Are you down to go to a water park? Like it sounds disgusting, but also amazing. It's a slippery slope. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) To say the least. (laughs) It's a little wet and wild for me. Uh, What Um, do you think? Um. Uh, Catch me I don't in the know. lazy river it's full like of the COVID same, droplets. It's like the same with like buffets. Like I love a buffet, you know, but do we Stop. really want to risk it <laughs> for some brisket? Uh, yeah. Do you like that? <laughs> that uh, rhyme I just yeah, dropped? I do. Uh, I do. <laughs> risk I do. it for some brisket. Yeah, it sounds like a mistake. <laughs> <laughs> I think we have some beef. <laughs> it's amazing. Um, yeah, no, our buffets canceled. Are they happening in Vegas right now? Oh yeah, baby, we're back. They, they're. Okay. I think it's open as of like June first. So, okay, this is how I would do a buffet. If there was one person in a mask that was serving the food at each station, mm-hmm. that way I'm not having all the people from all different places with all their different variants, right, up in. <clears throat> The meat carving area. Totally. You know what I mean? Yeah. And some things can be prepackaged or pre like, you know what I mean? And safely. Is there know. a safe way to buffet? I don't know. We're going to have to find out. I mean, I think some people. Also. Yeah. They're like, not doing. You don't it. have to be vaccinated. In Vegas? Mm-mm. To like go to the hotels and stuff. You don't. But in LA, but if you, you don't do. have, if you are not vaccinated, you still have to wear a mask. If you're not vac, I mean, if you if you're vaccinated, you don't have to wear a mask. But if you are not vaccinated, you do have to wear a mask. But it's on the honor system. It's on the honor system. We all know that the honor system's never worked. Hmm. Has it in Sin City? I don't know. <laughs> the honor system in Sin City. <laughs> yeah. So. She pauses to give her her lover a thumbs up. Mm-hmm. It's a real natural podcast. Mm-hmm. Things happen in the moment. We keep, we keep it real here. Um, what are your thoughts on s'mores? Yes. Oh, S'more that was such a them. quick reaction. Yeah. Hmm. Good dessert. Summer s'mores. <laughs> Great. We dessert. want s'more. The Great Sandlot. Dessert. We love the Sandlot. The Sandlot's incredible. <clears throat> squints. We love Squints. He has his own weed. He does. Hmm. Yeah. Everyone has their own weed now. Mm-hmm. What would your strain be called? Uh, Wolf's breath. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Um, Yeah. Wolf's breath. I don't know. I don't know what I would call mine either. Yeah. Take it to paradise. No, mine, would be, a <laughs> mine would be called. I don't know. Mine would be called. Uh, I don't know. Something dope. Something dope. Mm-hmm. Wolf dope. I don't know. No. Dope wolf? No. People comment what you think Wolfie's strain should be called in the in the bottom of this episode. I like Wolfie OG, but that's kind of like basic. Boring. Yeah. It's like seen it. Mm-hmm. But also, Wolfie OG, it does sound good. Yeah. Mine's shank nasty. Ooh, that's good. <laughs> no, that's like dirty. Yeah. <laughs> but it's funky. It's a funky sativa yeah. that'll keep you yeah. on your toes. Yeah. You know, that's that's what I'm leaning towards. That's what we want. What was the first time you smoked weed? Um, <laughs> The first time I smoked weed is different than the first time I got high. I smoked weed from an apple in like high school once right before I was going to get sent to lockdown, but I didn't get high. And then like, when I'm going to get sent to lockdown. Let me just pack this. Bo- <laughs> I was like, give it quick. to me right here. <laughs> um, <clears throat> and then when I was 19, 
uh, I smoked weed for the first time and got high in, in Vermont. In yeah. Vermont. Yeah. You went to school in Vermont. Mm -hmm. do, you, do you love Vermont? Because yeah. everyone that I've been talking to recently has been like, Vermont is amazing. It's it so is. charming. It's incredible. Yeah. Is weed legal in Vermont? Yeah. Okay, let's go. I think it is now. Vermont, we're coming for you. It's amazing. Um, I visit there often as much as I can. I brought Matt there. What did he think of Vermont? Matt liked it, but I brought him kind of at not the worst time, but it was like fall. It was freezing. So I just like love Vermont in the spring and summer. Hi, babe. Yeah, you love Vermont. I was, uh, thinking about the time you, you took me to Vermont and we stayed in the tiny house. You guys we had to flush our pee by literally taking the bucket that we pee in. Mm -hmm. out. Yeah. So I stay on my friend's property in a tiny house they built, which is really charming as you say and um one of the parts of that is they have plumbing in the main house but like in this tiny house if you're gonna go you you can't go number twos you can only go number ones and number ones is into a fucking it's almost like a porta potty style type yeah, thing no, like an outhouse and then yeah but it's like in the tiny and house and this like area over it well, it's, it's like they built a toilet, but like okay. anyways, you pee into basically a Tupperware and you have to empty it out. Yeah, it's fucking, you know, the beginning of a relationship. So we weren't, you know, like, we, uh, just hey, I'm just testing other. the waters. You guys were just getting to know each other. Yeah. And so it's like, oh, that's what a bucket of Rachel's pee looks like. Yeah. Oh, my God. That's vulnerable. Mm -hmm. How? Yeah. How? And that's how he found out I was the one. <laughs> it's like from her, my number, number one. one her urine in a Tupperware mm -hmm. you're in love <laughs> <laughs> that's crazy yeah I went to a party over the weekend where they had a biodegradable toilet situation so mm -hmm. you you piss or shit into the toilet and then you cover it with sawdust yeah and compost yeah I'm not into human manure. Yeah, that, they did that too. They did? In Vermont, yeah. Yeah. That's how Composting, Vermont is. <clears throat> um, These people would also, sounds like they would love Vermont. But composting is important Yeah, for society. Mm -hmm. I just don't think, I don't have the tools to do it right now. If I no. had like an assistant, I'd be like, yo, set up the compost. Yeah. Right? That's another level. That's another level. Yeah. I'm just not at the compost level yet, but if you're out there and you're composting, good for you. Yeah, you're enlightened. Yeah. I mean, I just really honestly, to be honest, just truthfully started figuring out how the whole recycling thing works. Mm. It's an effort. It's adulting. It's an effort that helps you save the planet, but it's still an effort. It's conscious of you. I'm very conscious. I'm a conscious being. She moves to Topanga why... once and then starts to recycle. <laughs> I was, I'm composting. Yeah. Um, <laughs> as soon as the bitch gets back to Burbank, she's like, trash out the window. Oops. Yeah, I I'm just kidding. So what? <clears throat> no, my neighbor is intense with the recycling composting stuff. She's like, you cannot leave your gum out because gum is plastic and then wildlife could get it. And I'm like, I've never even thought of that like mm -hmm. that. I'm like, a gum is plastic? I thought it was just gum. Yeah. Unless it's biodegradable gut. So anyways, I want I want you to try one of these so you I can tell you me your I knew you were going to segue into the mint. <laughs> okay, so these are mouth... I want something fruity. You want something fruity? Okay, they're going to... Okay, so these are different levels of mouthwatering for okay. cotton mouth. I, so, is it really going to make me drool? Yes. That's... Seriously? It's just going to make your mouth Give water. me the strawberry. Okay, please. so the strawberry is a... Strawberry magic is a heavier strength than the sour tangerine. That's fine. Let's do it. Okay, so this is do a 225. A no. Are you sure? No, you're just going to start salivating. Babe, do you want to watch me drool? <laughs> <laughs> so I'm giving oh, her this? Great. Great, a drool great. mint. Can you send me this footage? Yeah, <laughs> sure. He's going to jack off to it. Are we ready? Yeah. Okay, so this is the strawberry magic. It is strength... Two two five. So, I just suck, right? Yeah, you did. Yeah, you babe. did. <laughs> How am I doing, babe? And then Sorry. this one's a stronger one. This is a two fifty. So this is a different experience. Well, is, it, is my mouth gonna like fill up with like liquid? Well, we can test it out. <laughs> what are your thoughts? How, would you like the flavor? Strawberry magic. It's good for cotton mouth, right? The flavor is light. Give us more about the flavor. <laughs> strawberry. Hints of strawberry. It's a fun strawberry. Tastes like summer. Tastes strawberry magic. I do feel the magic. Yeah. 
Would you, ha, is your mouth watering? Mm-hmm. Do you like it? Mm-hmm. It's good, right? It's great if you're a stoner. Yeah. My mouth is filling up with some kind of water. Liquid drool? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, shit! <laughs> <laughs> Get closer to the thing. Yeah, that's right. Flint's oh. mints. Ah! <laughs> podcast almost over? Almost. <laughs> Is it working? It's working. It's working, babe. <laughs> Get rid of dry mouth. Get rid of cotton mouth. Have more liquid in your mouth for whatever reason you might need to have more liquid in your mouth for. <clears throat> yeah, it works. <laughs> Did you like it? Would you buy them? Yeah. Discount code shank. Flint's mints. My favorite is the cinnamon ginger because it's like a spicy drool. Mm. I love that you're just sitting here. Now my spit just smells like strawberry. Like it's literally dripping down my. Which is wipe better this than just couch. straight spit, to be honest. Yeah, we love it. Um, I like having one before I go on stage because I always feel like right before I go on stage, my mouth feels so dry. I don't know if that's like an anxiety thing. I would literally thing. start like drooling on stage with this. Well, yeah, you can't have it on stage, but leading up, like ten minutes before you go on stage, it, then it makes your mouth tingle. Too. Oh my god, that's a good idea. Right? Like 10 minutes before you go on stage, you pop a flint mint, or if you're like a public speaker giving a presentation, something like that. <laughs> Babe, I need a tissue. I'm wet. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Okay, it you- works. Flint mints. Flint mints. It works. And I want to talk a little bit of, I want to wrap up, but before we wrap up, I want to talk a little bit about charcuterie, because I know you're a charcuterie queen. Let's talk. So glad you brought this up. What would you put on your, I, well, paint a picture for us, your okay. ideal charcuterie. charcuterie. Well, to me, um, the perfect charcuterie is, in my opinion, a balance of sweet and sour, savory and sweet, you know, So salty. every type of experience. Um, yeah, I love, um, for dip. Let's start with dip. Let's do a hummus, right? Ooh, okay. a hummus. We love, we love a hummus dip. Um, I also love a cheese dip, like a broccoli cheddar dip or some kind of like fondue-ish type thing that you can warm up in the oven. Okay, around that, I like the mini peppers chopped. You know what I mean? The sweet, crunchy ones. Mm-hmm. Um, I like green apples. Mm-hmm. I like my mouth is watering. <laughs> so is mine. I don't know if it's from uh, the mint or from the uh, charcuterie. I like really food porn. tart, hard blueberries. Um, organic. Are you, are you making this porn? She's like, I like a tart, <laughs> hard blueberry. Um, <laughs> what? Okay, for fruit. I also love the dried apricots as well. Cause so those are good. Um, and that's for fruit. I love the small pickles. I forget how to like pronounce them because I don't want to oh, butcher it. The corn, the corn. Yeah, yeah, yeah whatever. Yeah. We know what those are. The but tiny. The who tiny, can say that? Yeah, those corn. Um, Cornish. Yeah, something, something like, like yeah. that. Um, I also love a like um, a dried cherry or like cherries. I don't Ooh, know, like, like a dried cherry preserve. Like, no, 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 or like a cherry, like the fruit. You know, the cherries are in season. Like put a, a couple real of those. live action cherry. Mm-hmm. Okay, so that's like those are that. Um, so cheeses. I love a machango. I love Ooh, machango. sharp cheddar. Um, I love goat cheese, um, especially if they have like the flavored goat cheeses. Those are bomb. What flavors are you thinking? Um, like the sweet kind of like the ones with like the blueberry, raspberry or like a habanero, whatever. Ooh. I also love a good habanero blueberry jam or a Ooh. habanero blackberry jam. <gasps> Fucking fire. So for cheeses and then the meats, uh, so prasada, is that how you say yeah. it? Um, and then, yeah, Which is that's like a good. spicy like salami. Yeah. And then... Uh, maybe I'll do hmm, pepperoni or like a salami, whatever. Um, so there's that, and then uh, crackers, prosciutto. Uh, okay. So for crackers, I love a thin cracker that's super crunchy that can be flavored a sourdough or like a garlic, whatever something. Um, you know exactly what you like. Yeah. Like I, I think about this all the time. So that's basically, um, I'm like, I think about this all the time. I'm so wet. She's um, covered in, <clears throat> in spit. At least it's my own spit. Um, People this are time. rewinding this and watching it. 
<laughs> they're like, there's so, going to yeah. be a comment that's like, 45 minutes in and 15 seconds is when the spit play happens. You're welcome. You're welcome, internet. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much like, um, I like a, a, a brown cracker, the one that's like a, like the one that has like the, the bras or the, what is it? Cranberry. Um, it like, Oh, I you know, know that I mean? expensive cracker. Yeah. Those ones are okay, like, it's fire. like, I don't know if you what have it's extra called, money, but it's like a $9 cracker There's and that it's one. like brown. Yeah. And inside of it's like slices of almonds mm-hmm. and dried cranberries. It's so good. It's so good. Yeah. Um, those are good. So maybe a couple, maybe like those crackers. And then, yeah, that would be like my ideal charcuterie. And that, and you heard it here, guys, on Shank. If you're looking for charcuterie tips, this is the place for them. <laughs> if you want to have the Wolfie charcuterie experience, just rewind. If you want to watch Wolfie play with her spit, also, just rewind. This is a fun podcast. Real things happen. Behind us, a postman just slammed his door and we caught it on tape. Where can people find you? Um, online and in person. Um, no, preferably at Wolfie Comedy, at Wolfie Memes. Um, if you're a meme person, she's got great memes. And yeah, I'll be doing stand up. June 19th, Hopefully we're coming near, to San Diego. Near, yep. I'm headlining. Wolfie's going to be opening. It's going to be a really fun night. It's in a warehouse. It's 420 friendly. Hell yeah. Come out. Support live comedy. And uh, I'll link to all of your stuff in the description of this episode. Thank you. Thanks. Bye. Bye.